training the focus of the camera directly on the gigantic pimple on my nose. Let's just go ahead, just, there you go, yeah. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. This is a dire set of circumstances on my face right now. I have been on some skincare journeys over the last week and I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it, but I sent all my beauty counter stuff back. <laughs> We've addressed it, it's done, we're moving on. Today is actually a really good day for a full coverage look so that I can show you guys the exact capabilities of a look like this. This is going to be what I alluded to last week. I just got my engagement photos taken and I asked you guys, hey, do you wanna see like a photo ready makeup look? Of how getting ready for a photo shoot looks different from getting ready for a regular day of makeup, all the whys, all of my tips, everything like that. And honestly guys, this doesn't have to be some huge ceremony. Both days that I did my makeup, I took about 15 minutes to do it. It really, really is pretty fast. I think it's actually faster to do full coverage makeup than it is to try and kind of like tediously cover things and like leave your freckles and stuff like that. So like kudos to those of you who are really, really good at doing that. Today we are going to go full coverage and I'm going to show you guys kind of how I get ready to look good in a picture, not avant-garde, not editorial, just look like myself in a picture because there is something to be said for the amount of work that goes into kind of exaggerating your features enough that it reads from far away. So we're gonna go ahead and jump in and I will kind of talk you through it. So I've already got my skincare on, Lord knows, I've just been bombing my face lately. I will say that I have been using my Crazer and it has been helping a ton with this and even a ton with this even though it looks like an absolute nightmare. So I'm going to be going in with the Scandinavia, the makeup primer spray here. I got the finishing spray and they sent me this cute little sample of the primer spray, so we're gonna try that today. This just smells pretty good. I am getting a haircut tomorrow. My God, my hair is in bad shape, you guys. I don't know what I have done to it lately, but it is mad and it is not coming back from the dead. I think I'm probably gonna cut a few inches off, so. Maybe I'll look different in next week's videos. Who knows? We're also making over my garden for spring today. Mike wanted to know what I wanted for my birthday and I was like, I just want you to buy me a bunch of plants. <laughs> so we're gonna go buy a bunch of plants today and I'm probably going to make a video out of it because all of you plant lovers out there love watching those kinds of videos just like I do. So I love making them. <laughs> okay, so next we're going to be going in with, obviously, the Luscious Cosmetics Camera Stick Foundation. This is an amazing full coverage foundation that is really great for warm weather. This is one of those brands that I discovered on my own. I made a video all about it because they really hit all the marks for me pricing wise, cruelty free wise, promise wise, and I just bought all of their stuff. And then the brand reached out to me and I was able to get you guys 10% off. So if you are interested in getting any of the Luscious Cosmetics products that I use today, I will have a code down below for 10% off of your order. Duh. All right, and we're just going in, girl. You will be amazed at how before your eyes, like a magic trick, all this crap disappears. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah, I'm over it, y'all. I haven't broken out like this in a really, really long time, and I'm over it. I am going to get a chemical peel soon, mainly for wedding purposes, but also just because I am over the acne, I'm over the acne discoloration, I'm over the melasma, I'm just over it. And so I was seeing my dermatologist last week for an appointment having to do with psoriasis, and I was like, yo, can you help a girl out with all of the discoloration on my face? And she was like, oh yeah, we got you. So doing that later this month, that's gonna be awesome. It might be a series of them, I'm not sure. I'll see how much I like the first one. That is instant full coverage right there. Absolutely gorgeous stuff. And it does last all day. If you guys haven't watched the video where I test this kind of all day in like 90 something degree weather, I will hopefully, if I remember, link that below. I usually with this do not even bother with concealer, but we will throw just a little bit kind of underneath the eyes for a highlighting purpose. I'm going to go in with the Tarte Shape Tape. This is probably one of the, you know, just highest performing full coverage concealers that you'll find, but I don't go like ham sandwich with it like a lot of people do, where they, you know, go full like triangle under the eyes and whatnot. I don't know, I'm already pale enough. So the fundamentals of this kind of makeup look relate really well to kind of the fundamentals of how you would do a piece of art, right? And I always kind of relate things back that way. That's kind of my background. My 
I am a cosmetologist, but my degree is in studio art. And I'll never forget kind of one of our first exercises that we did in like a drawing one class. And they were like, you know, draw this shade, you know, shade these shapes how you think it's going to like read realistically to the eye, blah, 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 light sources, whatever. And then we put them all up on the wall. And when we did, like half the classes disappeared. Like we kind of stepped, you know, maybe like 10 feet away from them and you couldn't see any detail from far away. And you realize like how much you're supposed to actually exaggerate the details and the shadowing and things like that in order for it to read from far away because your eye just kind of like loses that emphasis when you get further away. And so that's kind of the same case with photos. You just really want to exaggerate probably more than you think you do. So I want to go ahead and get a really nice, clean, fresh looking canvas, which looks insane. I'm well aware. And then we're going to go in with two different powders here. I'm going to go in with the Wouter from Glossier. This is a powder that mimics natural kind of skin texture. But first I'm going to go in with the camera powder from Luscious Cosmetics and it does look white. It is white. I mean, you know, believe your eyes. But this is not going to be like a Makeup Forever HD powder where like you get so much flashback from it for whatever reason. This stuff just doesn't really do that. I mean, obviously it's not a loose powder, so you're not baking with it. I would never recommend baking with an HD powder, but I love kind of the micro finish on this for setting this foundation. There is something to be said for using the powder that goes with the foundation. And in the case of Luscious, I definitely think that's the case. I love, 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 love this powder. And you notice I am kind of tapping. I am not buffing because if I buff, this is a lot of makeup, okay? This is a lot of foundation. If I buff, it's going to drag the product around. So the first thing I want to do with powder is literally just gently set it. And then once you kind of feel that it's beginning to dry down, then you can kind of go in and start to buff a little bit. I love how this thing is still so gross, like powder's not even sticking to it. We're going to have to get a little aggressive there. I don't even know what that is. It was just like this weird lump that came up and then I popped it because obviously and even when it popped it wasn't like a normal situation. It just, I don't know. I've zapped it with the crazer this morning to try and get it to dry up and it's just really not having any of it. So really great there. In fact, what I'm going to do here after I do the powder, I will go in with my velour puff and just hit that with a bunch of powder and hopefully it'll make it dry up. <laughs> We'll see. We'll just keep working on her until she does. Okay, so Wouter is actually pigmented. So there are three shades, I believe, three? At least three shades in the Glossier Wouter. And that is going to bring us back that kind of nice skin tone. It's got a really nice kind of trampoline delivery system. And so I can just kind of tap my brush in there. And yes, 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 you are correct. This is a boatload of makeup, but I find that watching a lot of these beauty gurus, like most of them put this much makeup on every single time that they do a beauty tutorial. Like I'm always just blown away by the actual amount of makeup that they put on their faces. And it's for good reason. It's because it reads well on camera, even though it feels crazy right here in person. So now that we have it kind of powdered down, kind of powdered down, we have it very powdered down. I'm also going to take the velour puff that comes inside the lid of the camera powder right here. Pretty cool. And this is how I'm going to just set my under eyes and not necessarily baking, but just, you see how it's kind of trying to crease on me. I'll just take my finger and smooth that out and then just hit it with this stuff. And yes, it looks white at first, but it will brush away and it won't give any of that really nasty flashback that you're used to seeing from an HD powder. I don't know how they do it, honestly. Like I said, this guy is just being really stubborn, so I'm going to powder the daylights out of him. Just give him something to soak up. Acne is just mm, so freaking frustrating. Cool. <laughs> that looks great. That's all. That's a lot of dry shampoo there, Khaki. Wow, okay, great. Looking just thoroughly antiqued over here. All right, got this bad boy. This is my very holy grail go-to Eco Tools brush. 
and I'm going to be going in with some contour now. I have been reunited with my bay of all bays. This is the Too Faced Pink Leopard Blushing Bronzer, and I'm actually just going to do sort of a gentle contour, and then I will go in with some bronzer and do some real contour. So this is just a very soft shade that, I don't know if it would necessarily work for every skin tone, but on my skin tone, it's amazing how it just adds depth back in without really looking like a bronzer or a blush, like it just blends itself. I don't get it. I don't ask questions. I just think it's fantastic. I'm just taking barely any, you can't even see it on my brush. And I'm gonna just do it like that. And that just kind of re-contours everything. I, I can't explain this stuff. Too Faced, you got it going on. And it's very easy to use. I feel like even though it's very like soft and high quality, it's not so freaking pigmented that you get yourself into a corner, you know what I mean? And for photos sake, one of the things that you can kind of take advantage of is the fact that things are going to read a lot simpler on camera. And so you can kind of get aggressive with like contouring, you know, in places on your face that you would kind of rather reshape that are going to look a little strange in person. You know what I mean? Like you've seen the folks who draw a, like a brand new jawline that looks crazy in person, but like it works in photos. And so you can kind of take a few more liberties in a photo than you necessarily would in person. Okay, I'm going to go in with my Thrive Cosmetics bronzer now on top of the blushing bronzer, and I'm just going to kind of accentuate the depth in my face. And so understand that everything when you are either under flash photography or any picture, anything, like you're just, it's going to flatten things out. So you can exaggerate more because you want it to read still as you from far away, not just like, a body that's catching the light normally and a face that's just this weird flat shape that what is that you know what I mean so I said this in a previous video I can't remember which one but essentially if you want to know where to contour if you've got bright lights that kind of shine straight down in your bathroom then or wherever you do your makeup you can just take a step back from them and it'll start to cast natural shadows on your face and you can kind of see what you want to recede from the eye and you can also kind of like I said take a few liberties if you really want to So you see the difference? Like how I've just created like a shadow right there that doesn't look unnatural. It's a little exaggerated in person, but I wanna make sure that that's still a really diffused line, but that we are doing a little more, <laughs> being a little extra compared to how I would necessarily just do my makeup on a regular basis. This is where the whole idea of highlighting and contouring comes from is Based basically on, I would say, you know, the way that makeup artists do makeup for e events or for photography, ultimately like how you want to look on record when you get your photo taken. And so that is why I feel like some of these rules don't necessarily apply when we're watching a lot of beauty gurus and stuff. Like a lot of the stuff that they're doing doesn't really translate live, like to your regular everyday life. Like dial it back. Okay, I'm going to take a smaller brush and kind of do a little more detailed contouring. I'm gonna use this guy from Real Techniques. I can never remember the name of this brand. I'm just gonna tap that and we're going to just kind of not necessarily take any liberties here. I don't think my nose is bad by any means, but I'm just going to kind of accentuate what's already there. And then a little bit under here. I promise, like those kinds of things won't read as makeup in a photo. They will read as your face. Okay, we're going to go in with some blush. <laughs> Not everybody has to wear blush. You know, a lot of people either have natural pigment to their cheeks or they find that it makes them look kind of too young. For me, <laughs> it is a difference between me looking healthy and me looking dead. And so I really do go ham with the blush. People have commented, they're like, did you just put blush like on your forehead and your eyes? And I'm like, yes, I did. <laughs> that just happened, believe your eyes because Yes, I definitely go all in on the blush. You don't have to go as all in on the blush as I do. So I'm going to first go in with the Thrive Cosmetics blush. This is the Cosmo Power blush in Rosie. 
and I'm just going to lightly dust this on the apples of my cheeks. I do encourage you guys, when you are kind of trying these looks out for photos or anything like that, to go with the products that you are already comfortable with. You know what I mean? This is not the time, if you are kind of doing something like this and it's out of your comfort zone, this is not the time to start experimenting with new products. This is the time to go with what you know. Maybe, you know, try out a new foundation, try out some new techniques, but the worst thing that can happen when you put this much makeup on is you get towards the end and you're like, I'm gonna try a new product and something goes horribly wrong. And you're just like, crap. Now what do I do? Just try and keep yourself from backing into a corner here. So that is a very, what I would consider to be a very natural blush. When I want a, an exaggerated flush, I will also then take something brighter and kind of pop the apples of my cheeks. It is a Bobbi Brown technique. It's a Charlotte Tilbury technique. And today I'm going to be using the Milani Luminoso. This is an utterly wonderful blush for this technique. So like I said, I've gone in with kind of a pinky gold. We're going to go in with kind of a coral here to pop the cheeks. Boom, girl. And I do kind of just like, I'll dust it initially, and then I will just kind of tap it to make sure that like, I'm getting it exactly where I want it. Because when you start doing like this, it can get a bunch of places that you don't want it. I'm so over this zit on my nose. What I'm going to do with that guy is go in with the MAC Studio Fix powder. If you guys know of a cruelty-free brand that has a product that works this well, let me know. But this is essentially theater makeup, and sometimes that is necessary. Sometimes you just have things, especially for a photo shoot, that necessitate theater level makeup. So I just use that to go in and block everything that just refuses to be covered by normal techniques. And then I will use that also to swipe away that camera powder that I have underneath my eyes and blend it into a natural pigment. I am a big fan of blush on the tip of the nose. Some people like highlighter on the tip of the nose. I just think that blush on the tip of the nose makes me look a little bit more I don't know, pert, I guess, is the word. It's like, it kind of goes with my elven sort of appearance. Definitely go with whatever you feel. Most of us kind of have some technique that we prefer. So I am going to highlight. I'm going to use the Thrive Cosmetics 3D Strobing Highlighter in Liberty. I have said this before, but I really like this guy because it has several different textures of highlight. The majority actually being just a pigment, which I really like. It does have a little glitter to it that will not read on camera if you're far away. I mean, you're just not going to see that. So the best thing about this is that, yes, it does kind of work as a pigment highlight, not just like a wet looking highlight. And that just ensures that your face catches the light in a very flattering way. I like to do it on my top lip right here. I think that's real pretty. A little bit on my brow, and then I'll just use the last little bit kind of on my forehead. I have gone overboard on the forehead many a time, and I just always end up having to go back in with a sponge and being like, well, that was a bad idea. Okie dokie. So that's pretty much the face. Then we're going to go in and pull all the features back out with more makeup. So let's do it. Okay, so for this, I'm going into a very trusty old palette. This is the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette. I like it because we are going to be working with a lot of nudes and a lot of mattes today. This is going to be a very basic kind of shade and light exercise. But first, we're going to prime my eyes. One of my favorite primers is the Glossier Stretch Concealer. I don't typically use this as a concealer because, let's be real, I have more to conceal than that but it works really well, really, really well as an eye primer. And just kind of smooth it out. I love that this stuff doesn't really make the rest of the product freak out. You know, if there's powder underneath it or something, it's just kind of agreeable. It doesn't really make everything roll around or anything. So I'm going to go in, probably do most of this with one brush. This is a Real Techniques brush. I love this little guy. And we're going to start with a couple of colors here. So I'm going to probably use, this as my transition shade. This is a highlight shade and use some of these, this one that I've just absolutely loved very hard. 
Uh, basically, we're just going to be working with some of these mattes to create a very gentle gradient effect on my eyeballs. Let's start with kind of this peanut buttery tone here. And I'm just going to use that on this middle section here, the transition shade, not on the lid. And I'm really building that pigment up. More than you might think you need to, okay? Because you're going to put on liner and lashes and all of this is going to just look like your face on camera. I had to kind of learn this the hard way because I would watch myself in my videos and I'm like, God, why do I look like I didn't try? You know what I mean? It's kind of interesting how I think I look fine in person and then I watch the video back and I'm like, gosh, like everything just disappears. If I'm just wearing mascara, it just, everything disappears. And I guess to some degree, it's how you get used to seeing yourself. <laughs> there is something to be said for that. Like I could just get used to seeing myself without makeup, but when you're expecting <laughs> it to look a certain way and then it just doesn't read on camera you're like oh, that's disappointing all right so i have taken that kind of everywhere even underneath the outside half of the bottom lash line and then i'm going to take the middle shade here and the white and just sort of mix those together and i'm going to use those to kind of diffuse this so it's not so orangey red But things that look pretty on camera tend to be, if you have deep set eyes, accentuating your deep set eyes. If you have really great brows, accentuate your brows. Like play to your strengths. For me, I do have really deep set eyes and so I want to kind of accentuate that so that I look like me. All right, I'm taking a matte brown shade here and I'm going to accentuate this quote unquote crease. It is going to be outside of my actual crease. That is how I tend to make my eyes look bigger, if you guys are interested in knowing more about that. There is a video on my channel called How to Make Your Eyes Look Bigger. <laughs> so you can watch that and you can see all of my little tips and tricks. But again, patience, patience, patience. This is probably the one time in this whole makeup look where you're going to use a little bit more finesse tedium maybe than the rest of your face where you're just kind of like slapping it on because I think that to a large degree it is just a matter of being brave enough to slap enough makeup on your face. So I'm going in with just a pale white shade going into the brow bone. I love how white doesn't even show up on my skin. And then I'm also going to do that on the lid just a little bit, not the entire lid, mainly just kind of the spot that we don't have makeup essentially smooth out any spots that have started to settle with that primer or any other makeup that's already on there. And the key here is to keep everything really clean. You want to make sure that everything just looks like a natural contour. Yes, you can go a little crazier with your shade selection when you get accustomed to doing this. I recommend that this is kind of new territory for you to just, again, stay within your comfort zone of things that you know look good and that you know perform. All right, I am going to take just a gold shade here. It is actually a beautiful, what I call kind of a patina gold because it has a little bit like an olive kind of base than necessarily a gold or a champagne or something like that. And so I am going to take that and I'm just going to kind of add a little more life around my eyes. I know that that's not really a technical term, but I find that adding a little bit of a golden backdrop underneath my eyelashes, especially on the bottom, really helps make them pop. Because I do not do waterline liner or anything like that. It all makes my eyes look smaller. I'm going to use that gold right here as well. And then finally, I'm going to take a little bit of a kind of shimmery nude shade here on my finger. And I'm going to use that in the center of the lid. It's kind of a faux center, kind of make my eyes look a little bit farther apart. And then I will take that brush, kind of clean it off a little bit. I always have a towel underneath me and just a clean brush and make sure everything is really diffused and blended. Okay. 
Okay, and then I'm gonna do my brows. I have my current favorite brow pencil. This is the Thrive Cosmetics Infinity Waterproof Eyebrow Liner in the shade Audrey. We're gonna go ahead and comb these bad boys. I had to wait for an update on my computer before I could film, and I had the chance to actually tweeze my eyebrows. What do you know? Put the cap back on for counterbalance. And really, I'm not taking any liberties here necessarily, going for as natural of a look as I can, but definitely want to make sure that I don't lose my eyebrows in my pictures. Anybody remember like when we were in middle school and we just over tweezed the crap out of our eyebrows and then in our school picture, it looked like we didn't have any eyebrows. It's like, okay, keep that in mind. If there's a lesson to take with us for the rest of our lives, that is it. Well, don't over tweeze your eyebrows, but also that they lose impact in photos. And you notice I'm actually holding the pencil pretty far back. I find that it makes a gentler touch. You don't necessarily want to go into it like you would with like a, you know, a real pencil. Ta -da. And then we will comb those out with a spoolie, <laughs> make sure they're even because they're not in the front. Yeah, always look for symmetry because again, if your face is asymmetrical like most of ours, you can take some liberties and kind of correct those things and it still will read as natural in the picture and it won't distract the eye as much. So for example, you can see that one side kind of comes down more than the other. So I accentuated this a little bit more, so I wanna go ahead and accentuate this a little bit more. Like, yeah. I mean, this is my Walmart brow anyway, so. Going in, you know what's next. My trusty Glossier boy brow to groom. Again, don't take any wild liberties here. I could just, you know, brush all of these up and have a really, really big fat brow, but I'm going really tame here because this is just not supposed to steal the show in something like an engagement photo shoot. I don't want it to be like, wow, Kaki's brows are getting married. And then the final step is actually to take like a concealer brush, dip it in a very, very pale pigment, even a face powder, and re kind of carve out underneath my brow for highlighting purposes. So I'm going to do that now. I'm actually going to use the camera powder because it is white. If you are not a pale, pale, pale girl like me, you can probably just use a nude tone and it'll do the same thing. The only thing I caution against is using something shimmery to do this. It just accentuates any of the brow hairs that are not tweezed and you know might be growing back through it really just over accentuates that texture underneath your eyebrow and if you're like me and you do kind of like have <laughs> generations <laughs> of stubble coming in underneath your eyebrows at any given time I highly recommend using a white powder or a face powder over a shimmery pigment situation like an eyeshadow so now that I have my face, my brows, my whole situation here, we're gonna go with eyeliner. Eyeliner is, for me, very important. It is not important for everybody. I wear eyeliner because it just helps accentuate my eye shape, bring it back to life, and also hide a lash band, but it's also just how I'm used to seeing myself. So in this case, I'm not going to do, again, anything nutso. I'm not gonna do like some big winged liner, unless it's your aesthetic, like it's how you know yourself every day. You only wear liquid liner and you only do a cat eye. I would not recommend using a liquid liner for photos just because it doesn't read as like a diffused line. It reads very stark and cartoonish and it will kind of show every single flaw. If you take a picture of yourself with that and it's not something you're used to seeing yourself with, it'll be the only thing that you see. Plus if you're not like perfect at doing it. So I'm only doing kind of the outer two thirds of my lash line here. I'm going to go very quickly in with a MAC 228 and I'm going to blend it into the lash line as much as I possibly can without like losing the impact of that line. It's a very gentle motion. This is not anything like drastic. I don't encourage you kind of like tug on your eyes a bunch. And I am taking it out all the way to my outer lash line and maybe just a touch further because we are going to put on lashes and so it's all going to blend together anyway. I find that for me, one of the biggest things that I lose in a photo is my eyes. And so I do have to put a lot of extra work in to make sure that my eyes read on camera. 
Okay, I had to change my battery, so I'm sorry if the framing changed. Also, photos do you a world of favors. A full coverage makeup look will hide a world of sins. Like, you could be really broken out and no one will ever know because these makeup products are meant, they're designed to work with those kinds of lights. And so it really does kind of like do a lot of the work for you. All right, I'm gonna apply some of my Thrive mascara that I'm obsessed with. I promise you guys, I am not like sponsored by Thrive. I just happen to order all of their stuff at once and really enjoy it and not want to stop using any of it. You can bet your butt I'm not going to use a product that doesn't perform for me. So I always tell you guys when I end up not liking something. I'm not just going to keep using something just because I'm like, oh, you know, this brand is being nice to me. It happened in the right order for me too. The fact that I went on my personal journey and then they reached out. It wasn't like I was like, oh, who's this brand? I better be nice to them. Mascara is on. I am going to put some lashes on off camera to spare you that nonsense and I will be okay. right back. So it is amazing what a set of lashes can do. I did damage these lashes. I was trying to pull some of the adhesive off of them because I've been wearing them a lot. These are the Thrive Cosmetics Jackie lashes and <laughs> I kind of damaged them. I wasn't very nice to them, unfortunately. So I need to get a new pair. Uh, they're kind of holding on by the skin of their teeth, but we love them anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and do my lips here. And I don't know, everybody's got their opinions about whether or not concealer on the lips is good before doing a lipstick or bad. I tend to just wipe it off. I don't really care. It's looking kind of crazy anyway. Okie dokie. Gonna go in with some liner here. This is just in a nice sort of like brown tone. And I use this because it is going to make any nude lip still pop and not kind of blend into my face. I'm not taking any liberties here. But that is just my personal preference. If you know what you look like and prefer what you look like when you take a little bit of liberties like on your cupid's bow or just make your lips look a little bit bigger, then go for that. You know what I mean? It's just this is not something like my eyes are what disappear in pictures, my mouth doesn't need any help. And so I just kind of want to, you know, accentuate what I already have without going crazy. And I actually have taken to not putting it on my cupid's bow anymore. I find that if I diffuse that line really well with a lipstick, it just looks prettier. Uh, it looks a little bit plumper when it kind of disappears. But these are just my products that I'm using every single day, guys. I promise this is not just like supposed to be some kind of like hidden Thrive sponsored video. This is just happens to be the colors that I'm comfortable using right now. So this is the Thrive lipstick in Stephanie. And it is the only true beige I've ever found. I find that what that does by putting kind of a similar tone on my face, a similar tone on my lips, a similar tone on my eyes, just kind of like keeping it all on the same spectrum, it makes it so that it's easier for my whole complexion to kind of be edited later on. I'm not having to deal with a cool tone on my eyes and a warm tone on my lips or something like that where it's like if I were to kind of like up the contrast or anything like that, up the warmth, you know, cool it off or something like that, like I wouldn't lose kind of the impact of everything on my face. Keeping it all in the same family makes it read as your face, but better, essentially. Once I get done, a lot of times I will see things that I think kind of need extra accentuation, and it's almost always the apples of my cheeks again. So I'm just going to take a little bit more of my Milani Luminoso and just ever so slightly play those cheeks back up. And you end up with this very repainted version of your face, <laughs> I guess is the best way to say it. And then I'm going to set this with the Scandinavia Makeup Finishing Spray. I'm gonna shake him up first. This just smells pretty good too. I love the sprayer. Nice. Ooh. Oh, they want you to do one of those. This stuff dries almost instantly, which I really, really like. Let's see here. If I back all the way up, this makes me look like a linebacker. So all of my features still read this way. And also, if you catch me from the side, catch me outside. If you catch me from the side, my eyelashes have a silhouette in profile, which reads very well on camera. I was very happy that I did that for my engagement photos because when I got shot from the side, it didn't look like I was wearing fake eyelashes. It just 
you could see that I had eyelashes because they will disappear on camera. So final tips on this, stay as matte as you can. You don't want to read really shiny or really dewy necessarily. Also stick with a color family that you are comfortable with. You want to look like yourself on camera. Well, you might want to look avant-garde if that's you. If that's you, if that's what you're comfortable with, then go with that because you want to ultimately just do a more exaggerated version of what you normally look like. For me, it is just trying to play to my strengths, make myself look as healthy as possible, and then also just sort of like exaggerate the parts of me that I know tend to get lost on camera, like my eyes. And then finally, again, go with the products that you know perform. This is obviously not an everyday look for everybody. This is not something where everybody wants to wear this much makeup on an everyday basis. And so if this is something that's kind of unfamiliar territory for you, the best thing that you can do is at least go with unfamiliar techniques, but with familiar products. Like stay in your comfort zone as much as possible when it comes to the products that you know already work for you. So guys, I hope that this kind of hit all the marks for you. I will link all the products that I used down below and any discount codes and everything like that. So go ahead and always take a look at that. I really appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you guys requesting this video and it was a really fun one for me to do. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you are new here and you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, go ahead and hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. I'm also running a giveaway right now on a bunch of Glossier stuff. I will link that video below as well so you can enter. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you and I will see you in the next one. Bye.